sink or float. Fruit. Apple. Float. Avocado. Sink. Banana. Float. Bell pepper. Float. Cherries. Sink. Cucumber. Float. Dragon fruit. Sink. Kiwi. Sink. Lemon. Float. Lime. Sink. Mango. Float. Orange. Float. Peeled orange. Sink. Peach. Float. Pineapple. Float. Tomatoes. Float. Watermelon. Float. kids welcome to my backyard and my wonderful campfire I don't know about you but I just love campfires in the summertime Ro I love roasting marshmallows I love sitting around the fire with friends and just chatting um, you've probably noticed I don't have any friends around the campfire with me right now uh, but I was hoping that you guys were my friends and that you were gonna join me this morning uh, and yeah would you join me it's a little warm and the mosquitoes are not great right now. They're kind of eating me alive, but um, I promise you it's gonna be a good time. So come on, join around the fire, and let's do a quick review of what we've been learning so far in the Bible. So we've been talking about three guys by the name of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God had promised that they were gonna be made into a great nation. And actually, at this point in our story, Jacob's family um, had about 70 people. So God was fulfilling his promise that he had made um, to their family. Um, and if, if you think um, back through some of the stories we've been recently talking about, um, so Jacob's family actually moved to Egypt because there was a famine in the land. And where was Jacob's favorite son, Joseph? He was in Egypt because his brothers had sold him there. And uh, so the years had passed and actually Jacob had died in Egypt. And years after that, Joseph also had passed away, but their family still grew and it grew and it grew. And this actually started to become a problem for Pharaoh um, in the land because he was worried that the Israelites were gonna overtake the Egyptians. And so that's where our new character comes in the story today. Um, Moses is going to join the story and he actually had something to do with fire uh, in our story today. So I thought, why not have a fire, sit around the fire, 
um, as we recount the story of Moses. So let's check it out. Years after Joseph brought his family to Egypt, Joseph died. His family stayed in Egypt. They were known as Israelites because they came from the family of Jacob, who was called Israel. A new pharaoh came to power, and he was afraid of the Israelites. The family had grown so big. Pharaoh worried they would join Egypt's enemies and fight against him. Pharaoh made the Israelites slaves and gave them very hard work to do. But their families helped growing. Pharaoh ordered for all their baby boys to be killed. Around this time, a woman gave birth to a son. She hid him as long as she could, and then she put him in a basket and set it along the banks of the Nile River. The baby's older sister, Miriam, stayed nearby and watched the basket. Soon, Pharaoh's daughter went to the river to take a bath. She found the basket and saw the crying baby. Pharaoh's daughter felt sorry for the baby and wanted him to be her son. The princess named the baby Moses. When Moses grew up, he saw an Egyptian man mistreating an Israelite man. Moses killed the Egyptian. Pharaoh found out what Moses did and he was angry. So Moses fled Egypt. He worked as a shepherd in Midian for many years. Moses got married and had a family. Still, the Israelite people in Egypt were miserable and they cried out to God. God heard them and he planned to help them. One day, Moses saw a burning bush. The bush was not burning up. Suddenly, God called from the bush, Moses, Moses. Moses replied, here I am. God told Moses to take off his sandals because Moses was standing on holy ground. Then God said, I have seen how my people are suffering. I want you to lead them out of Egypt to a good land I have for them. Moses wondered if the Israelites even remembered God. What if they ask for your name? What should I tell them? I am who I am, God said. Tell them, I am has sent me to you. What if they don't believe me, Moses asked. So God gave Moses three miraculous signs to prove that God had appeared to him. Moses' staff would turn into a snake. His hand would become diseased and then healed. And the water from the river would turn into blood. Moses still made excuses and said, please send someone else. Now God was angry, but he agreed to send Moses' brother Aaron with him. So Moses went to Egypt. God saved Moses' life and called him to rescue God's people from slavery. The calling of Moses points to a greater calling and rescue, the call of Jesus to come to earth to save God's people. Jesus gave up his life to save us from slavery to sin. So imagine with me for a second that you're a shepherd in a field when God appears to you and tells you you're supposed to go to the king of Egypt with a message. Not just any message, but a message to tell him to let your people go, that they shouldn't be slaves anymore. Would you be up for the task? I think I'd probably hesitate. And Moses in our story definitely had some fears and he definitely didn't think that he was the one for the job, but God, had a different plan and as we've learned over these last few weeks God always has a different plan it seems but God's plan is always good which reminds me of our big picture question which says is there anything God cannot do and the answer of course is no God can do all things 
according to his character. Want a marshmallow? Let's see, perfectly roasted. Mmm. Delish. Check this out. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Maya from Lebanon, New Hampshire asks, How can I know if God wants me to do something? Good question, Maya. You know, today in the Bible story in Exodus 3, we see that God called Moses to do something, and Moses wasn't really feeling up to doing what God had called him to do, but we know that God wanted him to do it. And so a lot of times in the Bible, we see people like Moses, and, and Jonah was another one, where God called them to do something, but they kind of resisted. And so we need to learn from this and try to understand, how do we know when God is calling us to do something? Well, I think there are two big ways that we can know. The first one is, has God equipped us and called us to do it? We can see from Moses' life that he equipped him in certain ways to prepare him to do exactly what God called him to do. And he does the same in our lives as well. The second thing is, do we have an opportunity put before us? And so we know if there's an opportunity to do something to bring God glory that aligns with God's word, that we should be doing that. We have to be careful about relying on our feelings because just like we see Moses didn't feel like doing it and Jonah didn't feel like doing it, sometimes our feelings can mislead us as well. It's great when they do line up with God's calling us to do, but we have to be careful and not let our feelings guide us to do what God is calling us to do. So if you believe God is calling you to do something, what are some ways that you can be obedient to that call? All right guys, it's time for our memory verse game. Uh, but before we get into our game, I just wanna recap a little bit about the whole sliming situation. Because um, even though I maybe am not looking forward to having slime all over me, um, I am looking forward to you guys learning God's Word and uh, memorizing it so that in a time of need you can remember um, what God has to say. You don't have to always have your Bible um, in your hands because you'll have it in your heart. And so that, that makes me excited, okay? So practice this memory verse. No cheating. Record a video. Get your parents to send it to me. If you passed, you get to come for a drive-by sliming the first week of August. Gonna be pretty epic. But for today's memory verse challenge, uh, we're gonna use marshmallows, of course, because marshmallows have been a theme in our video today. Uh, so how this game is gonna work is I'm actually going to count down from three, I'm gonna stick the marshmallow in the fire. It's gonna catch on fire. And we have to say the verse as fast as we can before the whole marshmallow is covered in black because nobody likes eating a black marshmallow, right? Gross. So, uh, here we go in three, two, one. I am the Lord your God from the land of Egypt. You know no God but me, and besides me there is no savior. Hosea 13, four. <gasps> not bad, you guys. I don't know if you can see that or not. This side is completely black, but this side, still white. Oh uh, yeah, we have enough room to whiz by another verse, okay? So here we go. In three, two, one. I am the Lord your God from the land of Egypt. You know no God but me, and besides me there is no Savior. Hosea 13, 4. <gasps> Guess what? Still black on that side. Nothing changed there. Black on the end. No black on the side. Let's give it another shot, all right? In three, two, one. I am the Lord your God from the land of Egypt. You know no God but me, and besides me there is no Savior. <sighs> Oh, guys, I think it got us that time. Not bad, though. I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to make it three times, but that is one very black marshmallow. Um, hands up if you'd like to eat it right now. Gross, guys. Just gross. I think I'm definitely not eating it, so that one's going in the fire. Still white on the inside, though. Ooey gooey goodness. All right, well, that is our memory verse challenge for today. So again, like I said before, practice this verse, um, send it in. I'm looking forward to hearing you uh, read God's word first and foremost, but also memorizing it um, and sharing it with others. So looking forward to it and uh, can't wait to get slimed. All right, well, what do you guys say? Should we throw another log on the fire? 
you can never have too big of a fire, right? I guess that's probably untrue. And why don't we get another marshmallow on here? I'll roast one for one of my friends on the other side of the screen. How's that? So, we gotta stay very focused though. Watch very carefully on how to roast the perfect marshmallow. <clears throat> but let's continue in our story while we do this. So, um, we had met Moses in our story and God had called Moses, called him to, to rescue God's people from slavery. Now, that is no easy task, if you ask me, um, but that's what God had called Moses to do. And um, even greater than Moses' calling, there was a calling in Scripture, or in the Bible, um, that God had, and it was for Jesus. And that Jesus would come to earth, and that he was going to give up his life so that we could be free from our sin. And Moses needed to rely on God's power and he needed to rely that his power was going to pull him through even the most difficult situation. Sorry, this is getting very warm. All right, where were we? So God had called Moses to do something incredible. And God calls us to do incredible things too. And just like Moses had to rely on his power to pull him through a tough situation, we can rely on God's power too. And actually, there's this new song that I want to teach you today. Um, so it's going to come up on your screen in a second. But it talks about um, how God's power can pull us through um, even the most difficult situations. Um, and this is actually a song we were supposed to be learning at our um, day camp this summer. Um, and we're not sure what that's going to look like that this year yet. Um, but stay tuned, and uh, maybe it's a song that will help you this summer as you think about how God is going to pull you through some difficult situations. So let's sing um, together and worship him. Together, your power. 
marshmallows I mean not to brag but I think I'm pretty good at roasting some marshmallows hands up if you want one uh, I see your hands but better yet I need you to open wide it's coming at you here we go Whew. I think I overshot that one a little bit let's try it again open wide oh no it's a little sticky here we go three two one Nope. No. Sorry about your luck, guys. I guess you're not having any perfectly roasted marshmallows. And I don't get to eat them either because they're covered in dirt. But what a story we had today. I mean, Moses barely survived being a baby. And then he grows up with Pharaoh's daughter. He ends up leaving Egypt because he killed somebody. Um, but then God calls him. And God brings him back to Egypt to save his people from slavery. And even though Moses doesn't feel qualified or doesn't feel like he can do the job, God had called him and God, God asked him to do a specific job. And God was gonna give him the power to pull through and do it. And so um, this isn't the end of our story of Moses. So this is just our introductory um, to the life of Moses. And we're gonna continue on his story and hear how God um, has used him um, to, to fulfill all the promises that God had made right from the beginning with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So let's pray. God, thank you for today, and thank you for the story that we can see in, in your word, the Bible, that God, it all is coming together. God, that you had a plan when you were speaking to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And God, you had a plan for Moses, and even though Moses struggled with whether he could do what you would ask him to do, God, you gave him 
the power and you give us the power to do the things in our lives, God, that are tough and hard and things that you've asked us to do, but we feel like maybe we're not strong enough, God. We ask for your power in our lives that we would be able to do all the things that you've called us to do. Would you make us brave and strong? And God, would we make a difference for you? In Jesus' name, amen.